Hello, lacrosse friends, and welcome back to the Begataway Cup 2023 at Justin Chu Stadium on the campus of Trent University on the banks of the lovely Autonomy River. I'm Stephen Stamp, joined by Jeff McKinley. We are on semifinals Saturday. A pair of three seeds won the quarterfinals yesterday, which means East versus East and West versus West. Here in the semis is the number one seed from the East, Carlton Ravens, facing off against the McGill Redbirds, who won a thriller yesterday. And Kenner, the story really, a big part of the story is who's here and who's not here. Yeah, big impact on this weekend with pro camps running. Uh, we saw it last night with a few guys missing and it's going to be an impact here today, especially for the Carlton Ravens. Jacob Gasparetti, their second leading scorer and an all-Canadian is not here. He is at camp in Albany with the Firewolves and, uh, you know, you can't, I know they're down there, they've got, they're doing all their medicals and things. So he is not available today. He will be here tomorrow, we hear, if they are able to advance to the final. So that would be huge. Also huge for Carlton is Thomas Kaiser, who is a second round pick by the Saskatchewan Rush, was in Oakville this morning at camp with the Rush at the Toronto Rock Athletic Center. He is here. He arrived partway through a warm up after, uh, I'm sure, taking the 407. <laughs> get here quickly. <laughs> get down. And uh, he is in net. He is the All Canadian goalie for. Kufla East, so that is massive for them to have have Kaizek in the pipes. On the other side, it's all about injuries for the Redbirds. They had two players go down yesterday. One was Dylan James re-aggravating a for an existing hamstring injury that took him out. And he was a, such a big scorer; he had 40 points for them. He had 22 goals. The next highest scorer in their team had 24 points. Yeah, and he's their setup man on the offense. So I know uh, speaking with. Uh, some insiders this morning. They uh, they were trying to uh, game plan today for what to do with Adam. Is he uh, he was the quarterback, so to speak, on that offense. Uh, so we'll see if uh, if the tweaks that they made will uh, will work today. McGill is also missing Massimo Tavet, but he. Uh as he was injured as well, Rowan Burrell stepped up huge yesterday with six goals to lead them to that victory. And McGill will start with the opening possession of this game in an East matchup. The second semifinal, which will be at 4.30, will be Western and Brock, a pair of West teams. So we know we're gonna have an East-West final this year in the Begataway. Yesterday, a uh, tail of the tape too with McGill uh, down early was being able to win the faceoffs, and McDonald had a streak going there that really helped it, them to keep possession and keep momentum, um, and really put the pressure on the uh, Guelph, Guelph Griffins. Yeah, we'll see how that plays out today. As here is the first chance, John Moralia passes it down behind the net, and McGill looks like they are once again, again going with five righties as they did throughout yesterday. As Tovet and James both went down. They just don't have a lot of lefties. That is Rowan Burrell, the sixth goal scorer from yesterday, and the lone lefty. I was talking to him after the game. I said, Are you kidding? You had five, four, five righties out there, and you switched hands to take a shot righty yesterday? He's like, yeah, got to do what you got to do. And I believe, like, he's still only 18 years old. He went to McGill at just 17. Yeah. Uh, so, really putting on a show yesterday. They've got, uh, they've moved Mark Simon, 21, up to play X today. Uh, in place of James, uh, so we'll see how he fills some pretty big shoes. Yeah, it's a, I mean, such pressure because James just makes everything happen. Here come the Ravens now into the offensive zone. Jacob Garcia has the ball and he hands it off to Sam Trumbull. Trumbull, the leading goal, the leading scorer in Kufla this year, and an honorable mention All Canadian. I think a bit of surprise for some folks. He wasn't an All Canadian outright. Be interesting to see uh, defensively what McGill does today after playing the backer zone yesterday, just trying to keep things tight to shut down those Guelph attacks. Similar players here on the Carlton Ravens. That pass doesn't connect. It's scooped up there by Ab, who's only been playing for two years. I can believe it. Louis Antoine Ab, the uh, SSDM. And that leads to a break and off the post. Wow. Oh. Burrell ripped that. No twister there. Maybe you should have gone twister. <laughs> that was his bread and butter yesterday. You've got to go with what works. Yeah. Goes back, though, to the Redbirds. Carlton trying to advance to their first final in Kufla history. They've been in the semis before, but they've never uh, they've never made the Sunday game. So they're uh, really looking to get the program uh, up a level here today. A 
nice. Here from the top, yeah, Erbstein. Starting from up top, spins, and that one's tipped. Burrell's gonna be the first guy there. And we saw that a lot yesterday from Erbstein, really trying to stretch the defense out, make a dodge and a pass. And Burrell decides to go over to the righty side, and he's gonna fire that one. No twister again, but ripped it over to the far bottom corner. Yeah, and teams this weekend, they're gonna have to get a game plan together for him. Uh, he's hot right now, and they're gonna need to double early. If you're letting him shoot, he doesn't need much time. Um, and he's shown over the past couple days that when if he gets a chance, he doesn't need uh, more than a couple seconds to offload that and bury. Yeah, Rowan Burrell is quickly becoming a problem for opponents. Sam McDonald on the face off again. Let's see how they do here today. Be interesting to see how teams adjust to him. It's up against Lucas Hadaway and Hadaway Dialed in on this one and looking around. Now he's having a chat with his teammate. Here's what I'm going to do. You will get the ball. It almost worked out, but it looks like it will be McGill coming away with it. Preston Norris gets possession. Yeah, we saw both games last night. The face off, the possession is so big. Yeah, most of the one, most of the face offs yesterday, McDonald was winning far more easily than that one wound up being. So we'll see how Carlton can muck that one up. Of course, they were paying attention to what happened yesterday in the quarterfinals. It's left here for Josh Jewell. Unofficial stat, but I'm heard through the grapevine that McDonald was 17 for 19 yesterday. That's pretty good. There's a nice rip from the outside, but Jewell is just off target with that one. Sorry, that's Erbstein. Sign Quickly up. restarting. John Moralia gonna take that one. And it will be once again McGill possession starting in the stick here of Mark Simon. As you mentioned, he's going to X. Pretty different dynamic to having James who's so agile and so quick. And Carlton's just gonna rip this one away. And Terrence Barina will trot up over center. Slow things down, get it to the offense. You gotta think so much McGill's offense would have been around James just setting everything up. They've had that flow all year. Uh, it's definitely going to be an adjustment for the players, but they got some sticks that can uh, can make things happen. There's a pass in front and a wow. quick goal. Nice tap home there. And that is Michael Moroski. Seven goals in the regular season. He gets their first today. Yeah, another example of just getting the hands free. Nice pass there, and he makes no mistake potting that one. So one thing for, for McGill, as you think about it, was at least... Last week when they had to play their playoff game, James, Dylan James, I think he dressed, he barely played. Right. Uh, so they were getting used to or preparing for a circumstance where they wouldn't have him, I think, in case there were still issues. He, you know, he was okay for a while yesterday. and He was moving like himself. Hamstrings are such a tough injury yeah. because they're, they're uh, one slight dynamic movement away from being really bad. And, you know, you get these athletes that are competitors and they're, they're – just in the moment trying to beat their guy and you're not really thinking about it and they go the wrong way and um, once it's pulled it's pulled and it's it's a hard it's not like an ankle you can tape it up pretty tight um, it, it they're really complicated to deal with and, and you're, it's an injury that you can deal with for a while so yeah. it's really hard during a season like this that's so intense um, to fully recover from something like that yeah they don't necessarily heal quickly that's for sure that one gets away. We saw a number of balls hit the turf yesterday. Now we have two in a row right here. I don't know if it's some Begataway jitters or if it's just tough defense. Here is Carlton pushing. That pass gets away. Now, yesterday, what we the other thing we saw was the huge wind ripping left to right on the screen. That is not a factor today. It's a pretty calm day. It's quite a lovely day from across. Yeah, anytime you're in a game of this magnitude, uh, limiting turnovers is going to be huge. And we saw four there very quickly. Um, most university level teams, you have your goal. We are going to keep it under, you know, 12 turnovers. And uh, we've seen a lot of them this weekend. Uh, teams are going to have to tighten up here down the stretch. Carlton making their way down now. See a couple changes, subbing through the middle. Look for Carlton to move a lot off ball here. Really make the McGill defenders watch them. Taking plenty of time with Isaac Laflamme holding on to the ball for quite a bit before he handed it off there to Cameron York. York is the third member of that high scoring trio with Trumbull and Gasparetti. So you know they're gonna be looking for him to step up as well. He is the lefty like Gasparetti. So that 
you know, helps them on that side as well. McGill playing a man-to-man -man defense right now, and we'll see what Carlton has on the power play here. First power play opportunity here in the game as we're over halfway through the first quarter. 1-1 the score. We've had low scoring games, particularly the first halves of games. Looking to move around the shooters. Got some off ball movement. McGill pressure note on the ball. Here's York up at the top. He'll take it back. Trumbull with the blast. You can see them setting so much up to get him shots. Not that he needs a lot of help. I mean, he can create for himself. But Just trying to pull that defender away. McGill's got some big athletes back there. Try and get them out far enough that, uh, that there's no pressure. 28 goals for Sam Trouble, number 44 for Carlton this year. Would actually put him fairly high in the scoring list for the league, even without his assists. Absolutely. <laughs> and you throw in his 15 helpers. Here on the run, McGill pushes it down, a nice finish. The pass ahead. Simon with, with that goal. Yeah, Oliver Palmerlow. Pomerlo was the guy running with the ball and then just flicks it down and Mark Simon wasting no time. Yeah, we saw this a lot last night. Transition goals, power play, not a lot of six on six, but gives them the old duck down, thrower high. Nice move there. Down in Cole Hanrahan's office. Cole Hanrahan does love that part of the field. and He does. He will do the very similar thing to that. Of course, this is the home of Hanrahan's Trent Excalibur, so we've seen plenty of him burying goals in on this field. Now Simon taking his turn. Interesting thing about these two teams, I mean, obviously being both East teams, they play each other every year. They play twice this year, as they often do. And they played their two games, though, September 9th and September 16th. Yeah, they haven't seen each other in a while. And in, in this league, what you find, especially once it gets way up, to beat the same team three times is very difficult. And they had the split this year. Yeah. Um, so it, it's a coin toss right now. 10-5 yeah. for Carlton in the first game at home. And then McGill won their home game 9-8. to eight. So Carlton, when you look at the, the standings and the, you know all the stats, all the overall numbers do definitely skew a bit towards Carlton. A lot of one-goal games in the yeah. East when you're watching the scoreboard. Yeah. Very hard thing to do. It looked like Isaiah Cree was loading up there, but dropped the ball, was standing on his stick, and they're going to call him for procedure for playing without a stick, and he's saying, I was trying to pick it up. He was standing on it. He was touching it the whole time. He was standing he on was. it. He was. He was it like a that. surfboard. Yeah. Maybe he was just doing a shout-out to Wavy Davy Leach over in England. He... Uh, Great longtime member of England lacrosse who suffered a uh, unfortunate broken neck injury in a, on a crease dive in a game. And uh, he's had, we've got people, I've got a sticker on my on my backpack and my phone here for a support Wavy Davy. And I know a lot of the England lacrosse players are doing a, a wave surfing uh, celebration for goals in his honor. Amazing. Pretty cool. Yeah, lacrosse community is so good at supporting each other. Yeah. Always nice to see that coming from your brothers and sisters. York trying to work his way through Meeks. Fights through, oh great save by Joseph Beam. After a pretty terrific little drop step move by York. Off the crossbar. Looks like they're gonna give Carlton the ball back. I was thinking maybe it'd fallen in the crease there, which would have been McGill ball. They call it a slashing call. So we'll see Carlton back on the power play here. See if they go the other side to York this time. Yeah, York's back at the top again. And Laflamme will get it up to him. And Trumbull there setting him up again. He's got, they've got that little angle pass. There it is. And the rip. And I don't know how you stop that. That's a tough one, right? <laughs> Trying to overplay any of these yeah. shooters. You really got to shoot quickly as a defender. Um, and that's where the discipline comes in huge. Slashing penalty is an unreleasable penalty too. So that is a one minute no matter what. There's not a release there. That's only on technicals. So Carlton will be looking to get to this uh, face-off draw very quickly to see if they can keep them in the box here. Yeah, would you think timeout here? Or? Early for a timeout. It is, especially when you're up against McDonald's who is winning a ton of face-offs. You might waste it if you don't get the ball. Back. Absolutely. We'll have a wing open here though, so that'll be a, it'll be a three on two for this ball anyway. They should be able to contest for it. Hadaway did really challenge uh, on some of these face-offs so far, if he can muck it up again, obviously that gives the edge to Carlton, but he cannot. That is a great drawback 
and a nice little tap play. The uh, Graham Hossack Goose by Preston Norris. Hossack started doing that a lot last year. You notice that in, uh, in Halifax? He just kind of poke the ball ahead to people. Yeah, good get in space. Yeah, lovely pass up to Logan Glick, who fights through some traffic. Dangling with the long pole like a young me in high school. Just kidding. <laughs> Except he's over half. Yeah. Oh, Burrell again. Yeah, I wasn't allowed to handle the ball, actually, in high school. Looks like you might have a flag. Oh, crease call. Yeah, looks like just crease. Oh, An extended discussion. They're all staying down there. It looks like McGill's going to get the ball, so it can't be a crease violation. McGill will be on offense Oh, it here. is a penalty. Okay, I never saw the flag hit the ground, but... Um, Nor did I. Ryan Patterson just went over to the penalty box, the short stick D mini. Oh, that is just a rocket from John Moralia. We see him involved in so many ways in legal offense, and this one, just simple. From downtown. Yeah. Gets it. Is that a two-pointer? It would be a two-pointer, I think. It's outside that arc. Yeah. He's able to take a couple steps there and really lean into it. Looks like we'll have a timeout here. So who took it though? Did we see who? I would assume it's Carlton, but no. Oh, it's probably McGill actually. I think because, McGill. Uh, yeah, so they can because they scored too early in the power play. So that looks like a McGill timeout. Let's see if they can't freeze that uh, penalty clock there. Get a big, um, big face-off win from Sam McDonald. That's a pretty cool graphic. David just put that in today. I got overly excited when I saw it. See the timeout comes up? It just pops out. Of the <laughs> I kind of squealed when he, when he demonstrated a free game. David uh, is a graphic ninja here working with us in the booth. He is. Working hard to keep all the fans at home updated. Visuals going. Lots of volunteers to make an event like this run. Yeah, we just want to say thanks to everyone here at Trent, the second year in a row hosting. Uh, a great group of folks that we get to work with. And, um, you know, so many, so many students and employees who are coming and putting in their time. And, and it's just, it's a pleasure being here on the campus. Absolutely. And it, it, people don't just show up to these, like the, uh, the months of planning, even when you've already done one that go into it. You need sponsors, you need volunteers, you need the, the people around the community and the city involved. And, uh, it really takes everyone to make an event like this run. But Garrett Eddy, a former Trent player who's been doing a ton of good uh, social media content, uh, did lots of work for the NLL last year, helped with the Junior A Northman this year, is doing some work for the Trent Excalibur, obviously, in the Hill Academy. He's down on the sideline there in his office uh, documenting this uh, Bugataway. I talked they to him yesterday, and he was saying he's been playing again. He got playing in the men's league, senior men's. And and uh, he said they were telling, oh, we'll, uh, we'll put you at midi. He's like, no, no. They're like, you can run around. He's like, nope, don't run anymore. Yeah. <laughs> Just put me in attack. Give me the ball in the wing, and I'll take a dodge now and then. Like, he, I mean, he was dynamite playing for Trent, right? You just get him the ball out on the wing, and good luck stopping him getting into the net. Nice pass inside. The hard twister. And Cameron York can't believe he didn't get that one right on top of the crease. That was a big face-off win to come into that timeout for Carlton kill what was left of the penalty. That's exactly what we talked about, right? You take that time out and you don't win the faceoff, then you've kind of wasted it. But I, I think for McGill and Coach Nick, Nick uh, Subri, that's one you work that you don't mind taking because McDonald does win so often. You're not going to get everyone. But. And you don't use them, you lose them. So yeah. nothing carries over to the second half. Right. He'll have won the rest of the way, so just for the first half, but good strategic move there. Strip of Burrell. Nice job, and then coming up with the ball. The Ravens are on the run. We got two seconds on the clock here. Big shot. Far out, but he got it on the net. Nick Baffia, an all Canadian. And if he'd had another three or four seconds, that could have turned really dangerous. But through 15 minutes of play, the score is McGill 3, Carlton 2 in this all Kufla East semifinal matchup at the Gatorade Cup 2023. I'm Stephen Stamp with Jeff McKinley, and we'll be back to Trent University and the McGadaway on Lacrosse TV in two minutes. Welcome back to Cross Friends to the 2023 Begadaway Cup semifinal number one. It's 3-2 McGill after the first quarter, and they have possession. Sam McDonald, the face-off guy for McGill, as the officials were conversing, 
jumped up and down and was pretty excited to celebrate and they got the ball and there's no penalty on Carlton so I'm not sure what the the issue was Ryan Patterson uh, number 26 for Carlton was was talked to by the officials must have been some kind of violation anyway McGill taking a chance Morelia has scored one on a shot from outside very similar spot but that one never got through to the goaltender McGill does get it back here's Isaiah Cree scored the game-winning goal yesterday the one that made it 9-8 for McGill. McGill trying to run the two-man game there. Burrell, the draw and dish as the double team comes. You can see they are very aware of Rowan Burrell as well. They should be the sixth goal scorer from yesterday. Morelia gets a little pick from Burrell. Shoots, no problem for Kaiser on that one. Oh, but the ball rolls behind him. Works out okay for Carlton so far. But nice job pushing the Carlton defensive player out of bounds. And that's gonna get the ball back from Patrick McClure. And we got a flag down, so we'll get a free shot. Sorry, Josh Jewell, the uh, heel player. Anytime there's a flag down there, the teams will get a free shot as long as they don't bring it back behind the net. But if the ball hits the turf, done. If they bring it out past the restraining line, then the whistle will go as well. So Gill will get their extra man offense on the field. Is that another flag? Looks like referee called my time. Yeah. This is sort it out here. Two? No, it's coming back. Looks like it'll just be a 6v5. I'm looking for 22 and 44 on this uh, top to left shooter side for McGill. Cree probably trying to set it up here. Running a 1-3-2. Owen Howard in there as well for Miguel, number one, right in the slot. Saw him yesterday, he'll be switching hands. Got buried as he took that shot, but the ball rolls to a, another Miguel player. He passes over to Rome Burrell, and Burrell bounces another one home, taking the pass from Luke Dalwick. No surprise there, is he's got time and space, makes it count. You'll see that the Carlton defenders there get jammed up trying to meet Howard in the middle and that second slide then becomes a little bit too long to be able to make their way back out to Burrell. I mean, it's tough. I mean, you obviously you've got to employ your slide packages, your man short, your situations, but I still wouldn't be leaving Burrell like that. Yeah, <laughs> and teams are going to have to adjust that. They might do lock and box, leave one guy in the middle and just rotate the four on the outside. Yeah. I mean, Luke Dawick's a good lacrosse player, but he had two goals this year. And yeah, I'm taking my chances. Yeah, let him have a go and hope your goalie can stop it. Absolutely. Oh, big hit there by Ab. Burrell again with the ball in the stick, and he'll wait for the McGill defenders to change. And Carlton's not going to let them sit still. These short 15 minute quarters, you're going to see a lot of the same athletes on the field taking it down from the 20 minute quarters. You're looking at a full difference of 20 minutes in the game, almost eliminating a quarter from what uh, what we used to do. So it makes it a much quicker game, right? Really way faster. So you're you're right playing tough to man to man defense here, too. There's a rip from the outside from the Morelia spot. That one taken by Josh Jewell, but the putback, Kaiser can't connect, can't hold on to it. And then Isaiah Cree picks it up and blasts it far side. Big rebound there too. That's a tough one. See, these McGill shooters aren't needing a lot of time to really load and unload. It's very similar in a way to Cree's winner yesterday, where he took that little sidearm, not a ton on it. Just a good placement. And at this level, these guys, they're, they're picking diamonds in the mesh. They're not just throwing it blindly at the net. They know where they want to put it, and they're making no mistake. Big face-off coming up here. Carlton came up with it last time. See if they can do it again. McGill wins it again. McDonald 
Having himself quite a day once again. I don't know if he'll go 17 for 19, but he's been a difference maker. It's such a big momentum shift when you can score a goal, get the ball back, keep the other team's attack sitting down there. Can't help it. When you're a goal scorer sitting at the other end, the ball comes, you want to just push, push, push. And when you haven't had it in a bit, yeah, you're at a momentum a little bit. Here's Herbstein. Fairly quiet for a while, but he is driving down now. A nice pass down to Cree. Goes behind the net. Rolling out in a little quick roll shot was Mark Simon. Pretty, pretty different stylistically, Simon, from Dylan James, who's just so, like, quick and darty, and Simon kind of more direct in that line. Absolutely. Bigger frame on him. He's looking to just kind of bulldog his way to the front. Rowan Burrell hands it off. Gets it back immediately from Erbstein. He'll slow things down a little bit with a 5-2 to two lead. Now they're just going to throw the ball away. Simon can't handle that pass from Burrell. And come back in the other direction. McGill likes to play a, play a deep ride, try to set it up across the middle, try to jam things up so they don't give up a fast break. Pressure the team to, to make a bad pass. Pretty poised little play there by Joey Gasparetti. He gets it ahead to Ryan Patterson. Joey Gasparini, a good solid defender for Carlton, but boy, you know with the 5-2 deficit right now, they would love, even with the ball in the stick of Sam Trumbull here, to have Jacob Gasparini for him to work with. Absolutely. Gasparini in grad school, he was a star at Bishops for years, came over here and just kept it rolling with the Ravens, a big part of their revival. But this program has been coming for a few years now. A ton of where everyone on the, or in, the Brock, or in the Carlton program talks about what Mark Lange has done. Oh, to phenomenal. develop everything. So big. You need to be able to reload each year. I mean, you can get a guy like that that's had some experience in the league coming in. It's very good for the program. Meeks runs the field, hands it off, and Simon, no wasted effort there. Again, just quiet efficiency as he takes that pass and dunks it home. And this is where you see a lot of the uh, experience of being at the Bagataway, right? Carlton's regular season record speaks for itself, but for McGill, they're coming back after a, uh, a year of being here as well. They know what to expect. They know the venue. Um, you look to Carlton coaches here to just calm their players down, tell them that there's no four-goal uh, shot that exists and just chip away here, get to three, keep rolling. I mean, McGill was in this situation yesterday where they were down to, to Guelph, and you just got to get one at a time and, and go on a bit of a run. So Carlton will have to match that, and it'll just start with one goal. Yeah, Carlton has taken a timeout here. Just recoup. Is it two timeouts per half? Or two one timeouts per, per half, yep. So it's two per half. You can use them whenever you want within the half. Yep. Both late in the quarter, if you want. Yep. Yep. Either have to have possession uh, in the offensive end or on a dead ball. Yeah. We were talking yesterday. Were we on air or off air when we were talking about the old style where you could you could throw it ahead and call timeout while it was in the air? I don't remember if we were on off, but that was you. We were on uh, air, okay. Yeah, it was a, a great coaching tactic, though, especially yeah. with the 20-minute with, with the quarters, right? Yeah. If you were getting pressured, if you were up a couple, uh, you had that ice play that you could use to, to mayday it down and still keep possession, setting it up with the, the right person in the offensive end. So it's interesting that, you know, I mean, McGill, the third seed in the East, Obviously, based on that, you've got to figure Carlton comes in as a slight favorite probably today, and especially, you know, McGill with Dylan James out, Massimo Tovec out. You think, wow, yeah, we know Carlton's missing Gasparetti, but they've built such a nice deep roster, but Carlton really probably fairly solidly outplayed at this point, I would say. So far, yeah, absolutely. And that's the thing with having the one-game playoff. This isn't a series. If it's a series, maybe it's a it's a different story. Um, you can't have a bad day. And this is a, we've seen this before at the Gataway. Uh, sometimes getting that by isn't always the best thing. As hard as it is to play one, two, three days in a row, uh, sometimes you kind of get the juices flowing. And McDonald with a big face-off win. Great trail check though. It goes right to Burrell, and we're going to have an interference call. A quick slide on McDonald there. Yeah. Try to get the body on him. Now, why was play blown down? Because possession is going back to McGill. I'm thinking 
that uh, the Carlton player hit him when he didn't have the ball. Maybe he was out of that nine feet. So in field across, you can have you can hit the guy as long as you're within a nine foot circumference of yeah. the ball. But maybe he was just outside. But it wouldn't just be a play on because he had a great chance to shoot. I think the ball had hit the turf at that point. Oh, okay. Because he made the uh, procedure signal out there. Right. That's a great point. Yeah, Burrell did have to scoop it up. I think it was a short hop. And here on the run, that bounce is going to be well off the mark from Owen Howard. Simon's there to back it up. And he saw something. He's like, oh, and he made the pass. But I think the uh, Jewel was maybe a little overexcited to get the shot off right on top of the crease. Carlton player has gone down and is slow to rise. He's up now. See Simon all alone in front of the net right now. Nobody behind watching him. It was Harry Osler number eight, and he is up and looking fine, directing traffic with his teammates. And a quick, quick stinger there, back on his feet. You see Simon coming from that X position. He's just not as shifty as Dylan James, but he's got that... Uh, Three or four hard steps and snapping the ball. American player, I believe he's from Connecticut, so he'll, uh, the American athletes, uh, a lot of speed training, a lot of agility stuff, pretty quick feet a lot. Here's a drive to the net and another shot by Owen Howard. That was a tough one for Isaac to stop, but he managed to get it. Look for Cree to set something up here. Very good stick on Isaiah Cree. Howard's going to clear out. Now he's coming to set a pick. And breaking ankles is Burrell. Howard's there to take the pass. And he's going to pass it back to Burrell. I thought he was going to shoot. They get it on top. And that one just gets away from Dawick and rolls out of bounds. Kaizik will go and get it. Thomas Kaizik, who was on a bit of a winning streak last year. He back, he was the backbone to the Nepean Knights Founders Cup Championship. Uh, just a fantastic young goalie. And then... He, this year, joined the Burlington Blaze. That's going to be a tripping call. And uh, was their backup goalie as they won the Minto Cup. And actually did play one game when Deacon Knott was, uh, I believe, suspended or dinged up for a game. And he went in and played. I know the, the Burlington guys told me, we Deacon's great. He's a great goalie. Nothing against him. But we didn't. We don't feel like there's any loss when you put Kaizik in there. Well, there's a lot of those Nepean kids that were able to come and uh, and help yeah. Burlington on their run there. Five or six, right? They yeah. were out of playing with them. A couple of that big trade with Peterborough that they did too. Yeah. Yeah, when they got, uh, yeah, I mean, Deacon Knott was the key to that, but they also got Sam Trump or Ben Trumbull, sorry, Sam's brother, who's the transition player of the year, and Zach Thompson, kind of the forgotten part of that trade. He right. was really good for them. Absolutely. And I think everybody, uh, you know, with Orangeville going undefeated there, uh, you know, nobody was betting against the Northmen, and uh, Burlington just said, hold on one sec. <laughs> Ab on the run, gets D stick, gets it back, and we'll go and check, but the ball rolls out of play, and it'll be Carlton possession. Really heads up play there from Barina there, just letting the ball go out of bounds. It was too close to pick it up. He didn't want to knock it out. Carlton needs to do something with this possession to get it to three here. York at the top. Looks like McGill's starting to pack it in into that zone again that they uh, that they implored yesterday, daring them to shoot from outside. You can see as York starts to venture in, though, how quickly they do come out to challenge. So it's not, I mean, they are packing it in, but it obviously very aware of not letting Carlton have too much space. McGill has seven defenders on the field. So we'll see if when they call that at all. But <laughs> if you count your screen right now, there are yeah. one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and Carlton still managed to get a goal there. Yeah. Now, it doesn't, uh, there was no flag, so it was never called. And you, you can't call it now, right? Oh, wait, they did, they were calling it. And they wiped it out. I never saw, I, that's twice we've seen a call without a flag. I mean, if you can score home. on them with an extra defender, you can score on them with six. So right? <laughs> for Carlton, that's a good message to have. Yeah. So six to three, a three-goal difference with 3.33 to go in the first half. Big face-off again here. This is uh, what really helped um, McGill yesterday was that they had this exact same sort of scenario, and uh, they were able to get this ball and go right back down the field. Yeah, this one's a violation on Josh Sweet, so it will be turned over. And... The thing about that, obviously, you can maintain momentum when you're scoring and quell momentum when you're giving up goals. So it's a double-edged sword there. McGill will take their time and setting it up here for that exact reason. Again, 
four 15 minute running time halves, stop time in the final 30 seconds of each quarter, except the fourth, which is two minutes of stop time. 80 second shot clock. Gil looking to spread the field here. Jewel slips. Does a nice job of getting on top of the ball to give a chance for his teammates to get it, but it is being scrummed for here. And it's Erbstein coming up with it. Slides through that check from Ryan Patterson and reestablishes possession. I would imagine the shot clock kept ticking because yeah, there was Carl, no change yeah, there. There was no possession for the Ravens. Now, is that enough to be a possession? It's going to be a. They got the shot reset. Yeah. We'll get another 60. Just barely in the stick of the Raven defender for long enough. And here comes Erbstein on Patterson. Switches and rips. That one's a little bit wide. Simon picks it right up. Looks to go again. Cree thought about the shot. Now he's fighting through. Thinks shovel pass. And just hands it there to Simon. Under two minutes to go in the half. Burrell dropped it. Yeah, that's going to lead to a turnover. Nice hustle by Preston Norris having a very good game. Carlton will look to get to four here before they end the quarter. There they hit it to Jacob Garcia, who slipped back nicely to create a passing option for Norris and leave the middle open in case he decided to drive. But now Carlton's going to slow things down a little with a minute and a half to go. I believe they have one timeout left as well. They do. It shows right on the screen there beside them, the little oval. That's Amazing. how you can tell. Amazing. I know. David Ray. Canva Ninja. Tough pass to the middle there. Got to really tighten those up. Maverick Hozil on the run. He's got the long pole, Alexander Cowgill with him. Over to Burrell. And that is a great save by Kaizek. That's the kind that can spring something. Spark a movement. Here yeah. we go the other way. Harry Osler hands it down. Right on top. Oh, and they missed the pass. Isaac Laflamme wide open. Tough one. That's the one you need right there. These transition goals with these teams are so key. It's so hard to score six on six just with the level of defense that they play. You know, we saw the one play yesterday where I thought, you know, where Guelph's uh, Liam Aston made the pass right at the end of the game. It was a pretty good pass, but I thought you had a good shooting angle and you're a, a big time scorer. Do you just take that? I was saying the same thing. Sam Trumbull, just, your team needs a goal. Maybe you just shoot that. Yeah, it's so hard in that moment, right? Everything's moving so yeah. fast. And your instinct is Laflamme's wide open. If I make the pass to him, he's going to tuck, tuck it home. And that's the good teammate thing to do. Just sometimes being a good teammate means being a little selfish. Right. And coaches talk so much more about that one more pass because by that point yeah. the slide package is rotated out. Uh, right play, unfortunate execution on the other side. Yeah. And it's always at the end of the day, it is what it is, right? You can what if these uh, yeah. little things, but uh, that's the pressure of a Gataway weekend. We've yeah. seen it a lot again today, the ball on the turf a lot and the hungry, hungry hippos continues with many yeah. people trying to get that ball and go. As McGill talks during their timeout to set up with these final 22.5 seconds of the first half, a reminder that at 4.30 we will have the second semifinal. The Western Mustangs, who went a near-perfect 9-1, will face the Brock Badgers, who were the third seed but took the big win over Trent yesterday. There is the time right there. and uh, Probably the longest rivalry in Kufla, yeah. dating back to 1985. We've got some stats on that one to share, and it could take part of the, a good chunk of the next broadcast. <laughs> Scott Fox will be coming in with uh, Pat O'Toole during the uh, Brock game after this one. Oh, okay, yeah, sorry. I thought you were talking about this game. I was going to say, no, Patty's lined up for the, uh, the game this afternoon. I'm not sure who we've got coming in this time. Looks but yeah, and incoming commissioner Scott Fox will have uh, we'll have about a we'll have a couple of minutes of uh, advertising and uh, from our sponsors, and then we'll have a couple of minutes of highlights, and then Scott Fox will be here with a guest. Looks like Burrell was in the middle there to start, but it's turned over. Oh, what a job! Hustling back. Oh, and Burrell's getting a penalty. He can't believe it, but you know what? I don't hate that penalty. <laughs> well, Carlton 
should be holding the ball here. Yeah. I know there's only 11, but you haven't been winning those face-offs. You want to start the ball uh, without having to go through Sam McDonald uh, on that face-off to start with it. And the penalty just starting now because Burrell had to run all the way across the field. So, yeah, they'll just hang on to it and start the second half with possession and a man advantage. They trail 6-3. to three. And they will try to battle back and make the most of that number one seed that they earned this season in Kufla East. I'm Stephen Stamp with Jeff McKinley. This is the 2023 Big Gataway Cup from Justin Chu Stadium at Trent University. We'll be back on the Cross TV in a few minutes. Welcome back to the 2023 Big Gataway Cup, Trent University. I'm Scott Fox, Commissioner of the Kufla League, and we have a special guest for halftime. Thank you for sticking around through the break. He is former McGill head coach Tim Murdoch. Hi, Tim. How you doing? Great to be here, Commissioner. Thank you. It's uh, I actually start tomorrow. Today is my last day of training, and then tomorrow we're on. It's got to be a real proud feeling for you after 17 years as head coach at McGill to see what's going on with your guys out there on the field. Well, look, you got to look at uh, Coach Nick Suby, the head coach, done a phenomenal job through the pandemic up to this point. It's great to be back here. This was the site of our first championship in 2012 as a program. This is uh, Begataway as a weekend, I think is something that the lacrosse world should know about because the atmosphere here at Justin Chu Stadium is unbelievable. It's fantastic. I really, you got to give credit to Trent University for once again putting together a phenomenal event. The uh, stands were packed last night, a lot of enthusiasm, a lot of, la a lot of lacrosse passion flying all over the place and it's a really close games every game has been close so far it's quite exciting to watch you've watched the first half we have a close game here what are your thoughts on your your team i'm always nervous having a lead at halftime are you yes but uh, i like the way mcgill's playing uh they played last night so they're a little fatigued but this carlton program's really impressive i mean they they uh they struggled for several years you got to give them credit for being here it's phenomenal what they've done rebuilt that program they won the east and here they are in the final four which i think is a if, I think they've done this once before, perhaps, in 20 and 40 years. Well, from our standpoint, from the league standpoint, to look out and see the teams that are here, it's impressive for us because uh, we've got so much talent out on the field. And with just four minutes to go before we get to the second half, talk to me about what's going on in the room or in the huddle with the McGill guys. They play as a family, and, and I think that they're out there playing for each other. That's the sense I get from the McGill program. That's well put, Scott. What I would say is... Uh, I think Coach Zerberg, one of his philosophies is to trust each other. And I think there's a tremendous bond and trust on this team. The, the, the young men stick together. Their parents are very supportive. They're in the stands here. But uh, he's got a great uh, group of volunteer coaches supporting him. And uh, you just don't want to be too fat and happy or up by three. Uh, lots of time. It's a lacrosse game. Anything could happen. Momentum swings. Absolutely. Uh, talk to me a little bit about the success that you've had at McGill at attracting some American players to the program. Well... I mean, this goes I, back a while. You've been recruiting yes, for quite a long time. Yes, correct. And I think our roster is pretty balanced right now, about half and half. And the United States has a lot of great players, obviously. we Our majority of our players have been tr traditionally from Ontario. We have players out here from BC, Ontario, Quebec, and across the United States. Um, there's a tremendous value that we can express to all students, not just Americans, that just in terms of what you're paying to go to a school like McGill. For that matter, all the schools in the KUFA, they're, they're tremendous values to uh, our, our U.S. families, they, they pay way less than they would for a comparable education down in the United States. And I'm, I'm speaking as a f someone who grew up in the United States, but I've lived in Canada for 30 years, and I just, I'm amazed at uh, how, that, how that message hasn't yet gotten out to enough people, but I think it should, and I think it will. Okay. What do you see uh, happening in the second half? Give me a little analysis as a former 17-year coach at McGill. Um, look, I'm just a super fan right now. Okay. I'm, I'm happy to be here. <laughs> I don't want to make any predictions. All I would say is uh, I think if McGill can maintain this momentum and, and maintain control of the ball, uh, the young man, um, Sam McDonald's done a phenomenal job at faceoff. But we've also got some really young young guys stepping in and playing for the first time really significantly this year. So I like what I'm seeing right now, but Carlton has a very explosive attack. They have a great goalie. They have a great coach, so anything could happen. Okay, we're down to the final two minutes before we get to the second half here at Trent University. You're watching the 2023 Bagataway Cup. Thank you for watching. We'll return with second half action soon. And we are underway here. Welcome back to the Begadaway Cup. We are underway just like that. And Carlton with possession 
after the Bishop, the McGill penalty right at the end of the period. And that's going to be another one as the helmet of Sam Trumbull was flicked back onto his head. And he's going to crouch for a second with a little bit of pain. But uh, it will be a six on four for the Raven. No better chance than a two-man advantage to try and get back from this three-goal deficit. Yeah, they need one here. There's no doubt about that. Trumbull Big. wasn't wasting any time as he just lets that one rip. He's going to dive and keep it in play, but it rolls straight out to a McGill player. They got to get it and go here. 6v5 now. Carlton setting it up. Taking their time, and now they come across to York. Oh, and they slide it into the middle. They've been going to Trumbull over there for the shot all day long. And then he immediately keeps the ball flowing through him and gets it across to, was that, uh, was that Lucas Hadaway taking that one? I think it was Jacob Garcia, 22. That makes more that sense. I missed one of the twos. Yeah, Hadaway's already out at center. No, nope, that's not Hadaway either. That is uh, Josh Sweet once again. Good change of pace. So they've been attacking the McGill defense a lot from the outside. So get the uh, box guys getting an inside goal there. Big face off coming up. Again, this is message at halftime, I'm sure, from the Carleton coaches was to chip away one at a time, one play at a time, uh, claw your way back. Sam McDonald doing a good job of winning it forward and backward. Just fights his way through that check and comes up with it and then quickly makes a possession. And the nice thing, he's coming up with the ball and then he's making the right pass as well. Gets it here to Louis Antoine Ab. And Ab, who is just a, a pickup truck of a player. He's so solid. You can see how strong he is as he fights through that check. Again, only playing for a couple of years. He was really taken to this game quickly. McGill circles back around. I'm really surprised that they haven't uh, locked off uh, Burrell yet. Yeah. Yeah, right now they've got uh, Nick Baffia, the all-Canadian defender, is watching him. You can see that's Baffia, number 10, out on Burrell. But they'll switch it up. And now a short stick on Burrell. That seems perilous. There you go. Yeah, you got to take your, their best player out of the game there. No switches, and really, you got to deny him from even being able to uh, to get that ball. Uh, they're just trying to set up that two-man game there. You'll see the switch comes, and he just gets his hands free again. So we'll see if Carlton can bounce back from that. You've talked a fair bit about the experience, you know, McGill. Every year, it seems like they're in the Big Hadaway Cup. They keep coming. They've got players and coaches and everybody. So much familiarity with it. And Carlton, it's just a fairly new thing for them. They've got guys who have played big games, but this is a different beast. And I mean, when you look down at the uh, the history of the this championship, there's only seven schools that have ever won it. You have four in the in the West with Brock, uh, Western, Guelph, and Mac, um, and only three in the East. Trent being new last year, but McGill and, and Bishops being the other ones. So. The experience and, and the expectation each year to get back is what uh, what really fuels the programs. Um, I mean, there's a bit of pressure on Carleton. They finished first in the East. Um, they have the chance, this group, to uh, to put the school on the map by being the first uh, in program history. And they've been around for a long time uh, to get to that championship Sunday. And you know, they're thinking, well, they're building for the long term. It's not like it's do or die this year, but you never know as a player or a coach when you're gonna get a chance to go back. Absolutely. You wanna use it. hundred percent true, right? You have to you have to play for the now and what's in front of you. Again, Burrell with the ball. Lots of time. Thirty or twenty-five minutes still for Carlton to overcome a three goal deficit. So they can clearly do it. We know guys like Trumbull, they can make it happen. But McGill is just responding to everything that's thrown at them this weekend so far. Their team has gotten better through the season. And they get Burrell open again. Yeah, you just, you, you, the defender on Burrell can't even be part of this slide package. Yeah. Um, I don't know if they're going to start to think about maybe moving Joey Gasparetti over there. Just flip it there. 
try something a little bit different, but as soon as you try to slide adjacently off that, that's just opening him up because the second slide, an adjacent slide package, everybody needs to go. Uh, and right now that's not getting there. He's been the hot hand. You got to shut him down. Make the other guys beat you. Six yesterday, I believe he ended up with. He did. Six goals yesterday. Uh, really hot down the stretch. And uh, and again, you know, he you now he's well out here. And Baffy is going to come and meet him. But now you've got Baffy moving towards him. And they isolate. There's so much space behind him. Again, the short stick. Ryan Patterson trying to handle him. And that one was stopped by Kaiser. And it's, we're seeing the exact same thing again, right? Screen's coming in. Setting that pick, just rolling around, just trying to get that top side. You really got to, that guy, that defender's got to know what's coming, be able to step around, go with him. But just denying that pass from either, from even getting there is paramount at this point. Trumbull watched by Costello. Spins, spins again, drops underneath. Costello really staying with him well, so it'll just be a lob pass behind the net. And Carlton's going to try something else, else with the flam. Coming up over the top, watched there by Meeks. McGill defense staying really tight. They get it through the middle, but they close quickly before Cole Byrne could get control of that ball. And here come the Redbirds sprinting the other way. Nice wheels there. That was Chris Corrin. Oh, that is a blast. Isaiah Cree. We've talked about the short arm shots. Nothing shorter than that. That is just loading up and letting it go with everything you've got. And that's a goal scorer's goal. You'll see Cree here when he comes into your frame, using the defender as a screen again, shooting around him, and just snapping it right up into the top corner. Such nice awareness by Cree of how much room he's got. That goal yesterday, the reason he took that shot was the defender was very close. He knew the screen would be useful, and that was what was available. So he made that shot here. He knows he can put a lot into it as the defender's coming at him. And another transition goal. Yeah. We're not seeing a lot of 6v6 goals uh, this weekend. Power play has been very big. Transition. Big face off. Carlton needs one here to uh, stop the bleeding, so to speak. Very another tough with the face off yeah. man like McDonald where he can he can push it forward to get it to yeah. himself. He can he can pick it to his wings. Um, very important there for your uh, your wing guys to be able to match up with their guys too to, to compete for those loose balls. And Sweet will communicate. He will battle, but McDonald just making things happen. Boy, it'd be nice to get a chance to see some more of Hawkeye Hamilton, the Queen's face-off guy who's the All-Canadian ahead of Sam McDonald, who's the uh, honorable mention. We didn't get a chance to see much of him this year. I didn't, so I'd love to see more and see just what he does to be better than Sam McDonald this season. Yeah, Sam McDonald has been very good. Yeah. Cree down, setting up. Little hand switch by Simon. He's done a really nice job stepping in for, for Dylan James. A little reverse whip. Kaisek was on that one, though. And we're going to have a, a ball. shove from behind. <laughs> That's Nick Baffia. Just lets Simon know that he's there, riding him down to the turf. McGill possession. The ball again in Burrell's stick. Watch Trying for. to duck underneath. And I don't know if anybody was coming or not. It looked like they were aware. Carlton defense getting spread out here. Look for the dodge to come up. Yeah, Jewel's going to go to X, and Simon tries to hit the cutter. That was picked off, falls down and rolls to Kaizik. Shot clock was expiring anyway. Kaizik will look to get a safe pass here. Flips it ahead to Terrence Barina. That, I think he was a little casual about, and Meeks comes up and causes the turnover. York didn't have much space, and the pass was too gentle. But then it's going to be almost picked off the other way. Nice hustle going after that one by Joey Gasparetti. And he'll buy his team some time here to get set up. Still Pass in. Yep. Lots of time left, but Carlton's got to get five on the board here. Gill changing. We've got two heading to the bench there. Yeah, Herbstein will move it over to Burrell. They're just going to take their time. They've still got the last guy coming on. That's Moralia takes the pass as he joins the fray. And one more. There they go. They've got everybody out. 
Still really playing far off of Burrell there. Yeah, he's actually heading behind the GLE, or at least down to the GLE. Now he's going to pop back up. Dodge coming from the top. Moralia, he scored from there already this game. He misses that one, but back up all over. It was McGill, and here comes Simon. Cree, looking shot, but didn't have a lane past Gasparetti. Again, Baffia heading out for Burrell. There you go. You fight through it, fight through it again. Nice job. Yeah, that's the key to that two-man there when you're playing defense. Got to get around that screen. Shot nice from save. Josh Jewell. And Kaiser's going to come up with this one. You like that better, right? The way he fought through there? Yeah, you have to. And that, that's communication. I mean, we can't hear up here in the booth, but I'm sure uh, the other defenders tell him it's coming. It's super easy to step around if you know it's coming. Um, but if you don't, that's when we see uh, a guy getting around and getting his hands free. Carlton will take their time here, get the right people on the field. Yeah, they had a long pull up in the offensive zone. Just going to make all their substitutions. Curtis Conley down in front of us with his lovely dog who's trying to get friendly with our uh, treasurer, Mark Walker's dogs. It's a really nice group of dogs at this tournament. Here's Cameron York to Trumbull back. Oh, past York. And that's a pretty easy save, I think, there for Joseph Beam. Yeah, Hadaway uh, went high to high on him there. Lob pass ahead. Cowgill, nice catch down by his feet. Makes the safe little pass across, and Maverick Hosiel will hand it off to Rome Burrell, who's Way fair up. enough to let him catch it out there. Yeah, he's he, out near center. He's out near center. You <laughs> can do that. Hosiel with the ball once again. Or, sorry, Owen Howard, number one here with the ball, gets it down to Cree. Back to Howard. I mean, McGill's not exactly going to go into a stall here or four corners, but they're going to use not the shot clock. Yeah. They're going to be patient, look for their opportunity. And of course, if you're Carlton, if you start to press, I mean, you're, you, you think the natural reaction is go get them, go press, make them go. But then you just open yourselves up. You make so vulnerable positions if you do too much, try and be too aggressive. Yeah, it's a tough, uh, it's a flip side, right? The uh, the clock becomes your enemy at some point, and if you wait till you're too far gone, then that really hinders you. That's a good goal as it comes out to Mark Simon, who has really stepped up today. It took a while to see if he had managed to get it through, but he does sneak that shot into the net. And there it is too, right? It, using a good possession to set it up and... That's tough for Carlton. The coaches are going to make that decision here with about 17 to go, how they're going to uh, effectively press out. 60 seconds is pretty long with a reset too that they could they can keep possession pretty well here. So I would look to them for uh, a bit more pressure out here to see, uh, see if they can't uh, get five up here before the third quarter ends. Love the timing on that one, by the way, with that Mark Simon. Just you can see you talked uh, a couple times yesterday, but you know, timing. Watch when the heads turn, when the space is there. As soon as Ben, as soon as Carter Smith started to look the other way and take a step away, Simon slid into that spot, and the timing on the pass was perfect. And nice Simon, you see the back of the defender's helmet. You're going. The flam came to help out, and it will be continued position for the Ravens. A minute 20 to go here in the third quarter. And I don't think coming into the weekend, too many people would have guessed McGill would be up 9 4 in a semifinal. I mean, they had a tough battle just to get through the quarters against Guelph, and what a job they did. And there's another save by Joseph Beam, who really hasn't been tested that much. No, they're really, they're giving up a lot of those outside shots. And he's been able to uh, play pretty good uh, stopper defense there. Patterson gets it back, but he is stripped. That's Ab with the with the check, and it comes out to Preston, Nor Preston Norris. Timeout taken by McGill, and obviously that is the, the Trent McGill rivalry is really built, like you said, over the last decade and a half. And I know there's some pretty healthy animosity on the field. Oh yeah, no, <laughs> those two yeah. teams do not like each other, and and that is that was 2008 where Trent went 10 and 0 and got bounced early and, and McGill was actually the team that, that sealed it for Brock and not being in the final that year, eventually losing to Guelph, but 
again, that's uh, that's part of the program builder, getting to that final. And, you know, it'd be years before they'd actually win the first title in, uh, in 2012. Down to 10 seconds. McGill with it. Burrell way up high as they're going to go for others now. It pops out to him. He's going to try and scoop it up off the turf. Nice job, though, by Carter Henry. Carter Smith, sorry, to knock that one away. The first the first half of the second half, the third quarter that is normally called, will expire. It is nine to four for McGill. Carlton will gather and see what they can do in the fourth quarter. McGill wanted to just keep on riding the tide. I'm Stephen Stamp with Jeff McKinley. This is Begattaway Cup 2023 at Trent University. We'll be back on Lacrosse TV in two minutes. Welcome back Lacrosse friends to the 2023 Begattaway Cup at Justin Chu Stadium at Trent University. I'm Stephen Stamp with Jeff McKinley and it is nine to four McGill. They have 15 minutes to continue playing well to book themselves a ticket to the championship against the winner of the second semifinal between Western and Brock. Carlton stands in their way and you know the Ravens are gonna be going hard after that ball pops out and it's Cree coming up with it, taps it back with the goose over over to uh, Oliver po Olivier Pomerlo. Referee saying that he went over the line, he was not released, so it'll be Carlton Ball. So that's about the only way you can get a face-off win against Sam McDonald. Procedure, hey, you'll take yep. whatever you can at this point. Yep. Carlton taking their time. York, watched by Meeks. Leans in, Meeks repels him, repels him. Here's Trumbull, gets underneath, has a lane. Bouncer wide though, I think, oh, Beam got a bit of it. Pomerlo, oh, actually Pomerlo didn't get it. It bounced up and was eventually scooped by Costello and he is going for a run. McGill looking to push the ball. Burrell will just get it on the outside. And here comes Carlton with a bit of pressure, not letting them set up. That's Baffia who's been watching him all day. And every time he's let him get away to somebody else, it has not gone well. Good job there by Carlton defense, making them turn it back up the field. McGill probably okay with that. I mean, obviously if the chance is there, you'd love to go, but Time ticking is the friend of the Redbirds. Here's Herbstein, watched by Osler. Cree, down at the goal line, spins and slips. Big Balls on the ground. Yep. Gasparetti drops it there, gets it back up. It's a fairly bold pass back towards your net area, but they make it work. Carter Smith went for a trot and got the ball up into the offensive zone. Trumbull trying to fight through. I feel like I jinxed him by saying he should have shot earlier. <laughs> now he's thinking, yeah, I've got to do it for my guys. Yeah, he did a good job there getting that off the turf. That was a triple bouncer there. Looks like the defender stick hooked a bit yet in the process of making that pass. And we'll see pressure come out again. Moralia very calmly hands it off and he wants a penalty as he took a swat in an unprotected spot on the arm. A little tap from Terrence Barina. Here's Erbstein. Beats it down. Cree fires one. It goes wide and it's going to be back up by McGill. Simon will be bringing it in from X. Quickly to Burrell. Had to double check, make sure he had it and it was sitting properly in the, in the head of the stick. Sometimes it just doesn't feel right. Rolling across the top. Baffia staying with him. And they'll look to dodge from the top here. Looking for the circle throwback. Jason, offensive player, wasn't there, and he'll say, let's do this all over again. As Herbstein dodged in there, Baffia actually got, see, he's jumping out on top of Burrell again, trying to take away the passing lane. Haven't seen Burrell kind of slide towards the net, try to open up some space when when he gets that position. Be curious to see if he's gonna take try to take advantage of that, see if they suggest to him that he slip down the lane. Here's Baffia on the run on defense, pushing it forward. He's going to hand it off and stayed for a moment, heads back as it comes over to Osler. Carlton will change, get their offensive players on. Trumbull sending it all the way across, and they'll set up. Under 11-11 to go here in the fourth. Still a five-goal lead 
for the Redbirds. Colton looking to send lots of cutters through, see what they can get off ball. There was space for York, but a nice save, Joseph Beam. He's made some stops today. Hasn't faced a ton of chances, but boy, he's so sharp when, he's right, when he uh, does have to be. And the sun is coming out. That's gonna warm things up substantially. It's not a cold weekend when the, when the wind isn't blowing, but it got nippy yesterday. Because yeah, of that, cold. yeah, the, the gale's just blasting in left to right on us. Not as big of a crowd out there today for this one. And that's one thing, you know, with, with the host team, Trent, losing, that does drain a bit of the crowd mm -hmm. from the uh, the home venue. But a pretty good, pretty good group of folks out here watching, supporting these two teams. And already a fair number of people wearing purple and Brock red down there ready for the next game, which will be at 4.30 in the second semifinal and all West Conference matchup. Gil just working the clock here. Howard, another hard shot taken by, by Moralia. Simon turned aside but gets the pass out. Moralia on the run, changes sides and Bounces one, didn't have a lot on it, but it still got away from Kaizik. Went off his stick and bounced free. Chance for McGill to get it. We're gonna have a penalty though on the battle for the loose ball. I'm actually surprised Carlton hasn't switched to a, a zone yet. McGill does have some good shooters, but with a, with a goalie like that and the pipes, can usually give some uh, pretty good far shots up. Especially with some of those American shooters, they have cannons. They tend not to be as deadly accurate as some of the Canadians. Right. Making sure you overplay that side Burrell's on, though, absolutely. Yeah. Carlton will go back to the, the power play here. Another Big stop save. by Beam. Wow. wow. We've seen some fine goaltending this weekend. Connor O'Toole named the player of the game for Brock yesterday after a great performance, especially in the third and fourth quarter. He really made some big stops. And now. Absolutely. Hayner yesterday for Trent too. He did a tremendous job stepping in. Yeah. He made a couple saves, just one-on-one, -on -one, two-on-ones that he had no business making. All the goalies have done a very good job, and that's the thing to get here. Like you need to have good goalies in the cage, and uh, that's why you see the perennials here a lot of the time. They have that depth and, and the rosters that can uh, that can compete throughout the season. Connor O'Toole, who had that the great game for Brock yesterday, he's here, Brock yesterday is here again today. And I asked him like because he was drafted by Vancouver in the NLL draft in September. I said, does Vancouver not have? camp this weekend he said no it's uh, last weekend and then next weekend he said thanks to Keegan Ball for for getting married this weekend <laughs> drawing everybody away so they couldn't schedule camp this weekend and uh, yeah that's that's basically what allowed him to be here and there is some uh, you know uh, Kufla alumni in the uh, the NLL GM ranks yeah uh, Sean Williams with uh, with Vegas you got uh, Danny Carey, who actually coached at, at Trent for a time right. uh, in Rochester there. Clem Durazio is somewhere around the league, I'm sure, still. He's in Albany. In Albany. And, uh, yeah, they know uh, they know what this me weekend means. Um, big stop there. It's kind of a deflection play there by Moralia as he just tapped it. The real, I mean, you talk about quick sticks. That was very much a tennis racket type shot. Barina under some pressure. Nice job to evade one player and then make the pass ahead, but can't quite connect with Osler. But Trumbull there to back it up, and Carlton remains on the attack. That was a big play there by Trumbull. He was an inch yeah. off that line. Yeah. Another nice stop by Beam on the hard rip from Garcia. Oh, Carlton, uh, time is becoming the enemy here. We got seven minutes left. Five goals to, to tie her up. Hill pushing forward, and what's the? Going back, Carlton ball. Yeah, the Ravens going to try and push it ahead. Trumbull very calmly accepts that pass and flings it over, and here's a chance and a shot, nice goal. What a finish by Isaac Laflamme, and Trumbull 
Going back to what he knows is best, making that smart pass, lovely feed through. And they called the timeout there. Freeze the clock. Good transition goal. See what Josh Sweet can do here. Carlton manning up that wing to McDonald's back there. Another extended battle. Both, both face-off guys looking around to see how things are shaping up, where everybody is. McDonald really took an extended look. It pops out and it comes straight up to Pomerlo. Sweet with a good move there to just try and catch him quick and get the shovel underneath there and lift up. But the wing play of the uh, McGill players there comes up this ball again. And again, it's in 44 Rome Burrell stick. Look for Carlton to give a bit of pressure here. Howard coming out up top. Burrell taking his time. Here comes Simon from X. Facing lots of pressure there. Decides to dish it over to Cree. Look for a dodge here. Oh no, the midi D falls. Nice stop there by Kaizek as Burrell just reaches around for that shot. And they've actually, they've kind of gotten away from Bafia being over solely on Burrell now and they actually leave Burrell open. Well, he's consistent. Them, yeah. right? <laughs> Every time I say, wait a minute, that could be trouble. The ball's in the net. Yeah, that's, uh, he is executing. He's having himself a pretty good Begataway weekend. And now we're under five to play here. And Burrell is a young man with all kinds of potential. We've seen bits and pieces of it, and it feels like this weekend is his coming out party. Yeah, he's done a very good job, especially, uh, you know, your top point getter, Dylan James, goes down with injury. Um, you know, you're seeing some poise from the McGill athletes here, not letting them rattle them. And other guys have to step up. See the confidence Cree has as well. He gets it over to Burrell and heads back over to his spot on the right side. McGill will really use the clock up now. Yeah, down to the final, almost four minutes, a five goal lead. McGill, what a weekend they are having. Oh, Burrell had looked behind him there like a goalie when he thinks the ball might have snuck through, had it in his stick, it fell down, he picks it back up, and then after all of that, makes the pass across and it rolls out of bounds. Gill can pull this out. I believe it'll be the first time since 2014 that they've been in the final. Really? Wow. Was that was that the Bishops? Was that up in Bishops in Sherbrooke? Lakes? I believe Lakes? so. I believe they played what lost to Guelph that year. I'll have to double check that because they were 20 actually 2015. They beat Western. Yeah, they won in 15 right after. They won in 15 yeah, after they lost. So still about, what's that, an eight-year hiatus? It is eight years. Of course, they had two years off. They, you know, We had the one season in 2020 canceled because of COVID, and then McGill was unable to come back in the... Right, decision by the athletic department, yep. I believe. Yep, different season the next year for all of us. Good that we're back now. Yep, flowing again. and some, you know, A great Big Hadaway Cup last year. And uh, we've had some excellent games so far this weekend. We got another one coming up at 4.30. Western and Brock, the storied rivalry in semifinal number two. Yeah, been going on for ages. Brock, of course, with the most Begataway Cups and Western wins second most. For Brock? They have 19. I believe Western has seven. And There's Sam Trumbull banging another one home to try to cut into that deficit. And the clock has stopped. Is it the last three minutes stop time? I thought it was the last two. I thought it was the last two as well. I don't know if we have a timeout here. 
Looks like Carlton is walking oh, they out have. on the field. Yeah, so they, they have the taken time out. Okay, that makes sense. Wow, that was quick. They were ready for that one because that stopped in a heartbeat. Good play there too. I mean, at this point, you got to stop that clock before you get inside that two minutes to to give yourself a chance. It will mean that they have none left, so they'll be giving their players everything they need to know. Uh, this point of the year, you've ran your sort of last minute offenses that you you need. You've ran through your plays. I mean, nothing new is coming out of the playbook uh, that players haven't practiced yet. So coaches will just be reminding players uh, what the expectation is, who needs to be where, uh, and make sure they have the correct personnel on the field. How surprised are you that McGill has won this, is winning this game? I'm sorry, it's not over, but is in such a strong position and that it's not, I mean, I don't, I don't think anybody would be surprised to see McGill win, but that they've basically controlled so much of the game throughout. Yeah, I think really it's come down to uh, uh, possession. They've, they've had the possession on it. It's a lot yeah. easier to play the game when, uh, you know, you are the hammer and not the nail, so to speak. And, you know, it does have to be, whether it's right or not, you know, you're missing one of your top players for Carlton. That's kind of going to be in the back of your brain. And, uh, you know, it is really like the experience that comes with being at this weekend. You... Uh, you got to learn to, and I know from personal experience, to lose before you can win um, and getting there. And it, it's just when you have the experience of coming uh, to the event, uh, the players just know what to expect. And when it does happen, I mean, we saw this with Trent last year where there had been so many close calls um, through your tenure and Mark Farthings and, and uh, the, uh, the excitement and the Sometimes you think it's relief when it kind of finally happens. It just seemed like pure exhilaration yes. for the Excalibur last year. Yeah, so many years of, you know, like seven years in a row of getting the bagat away. And, you know, every team gets so close, right? And the regular season just, it doesn't matter anymore. So it, it's getting here and, and doing what you can to, to help your team excel. Kaiser got it ahead to York and Carlton pushing it. There's another And there's goal. another one. Yeah, they pass it through and a nice little finish. Was that Jacob Garcia with that one? I believe it was cutting through. Might have been La Flamme. Too quick. He, he was into that barrel roll there, and the number disappeared. Huge face off here as Carlton gets it within three. You know they're not going anywhere. Yeah, I mean, I, and I know I made it sound for a second like McGill's already won. I definitely did not think they have, and Carlton's right there. Oh, nice scoop up there by Preston Norris. Now the doubles are going to come. And, of course, again, you make yourself vulnerable. You can see Kaizek hedging, hedging. Now he comes out, throws a check. His helmet pops off. He's going to just go get it and put it back on. He was unfazed. Nice job maintaining his balance and then sliding down as Osler took the hit, was okay with it, but then gave it off. Here's Trumbull. He's got a lane underneath. Pretty nice job there by Costello to stay with him. Know that Trumbull had a step but didn't give up and made it a harder shot. Comes out and Joseph Bean was was wandering, but he's back in time to turn aside that shot. It went just wide from Cameron York. Just under a minute here. Trumbull, ready to start. Directing traffic. Shot there. Yeah, that was Isaac Laflamme. Pretty far off target. York. Another goal. That was like the old the old Scott Evans approach, just shoot it as hard as you can. Absolutely. And things will happen well. Yep. Scotty is a competitor. In yep. a game like this, that's who you want on your side. Taking Evans on my team always. always. They know how to win. And just like that, we're 10-8. Wow. I always said people would always talk about who would you want to have the ball when you desperately need a goal in every game. And Scott Evans wouldn't come up much for some reason. I guess he didn't score as many goals as somebody else. I always said Scott Evans. Always. He will do whatever he has to. Yeah, competitor not worrying about what could go wrong. So yeah. many kids growing up, they worry about making a bad pass or making a bad play. Uh, Evie's just a competitor, wants to yeah. win. Wants to be on the floor, wants the ball. Big Another big win off. by McDonald. That's huge. 
into the final 43 seconds here. Burrell takes it. Good. And Burrell, we talked about it being a breakout for him, his, you know, his coming out party. Look how confident he looks. Just controlling the ball, running around. Nick Suber's going to take his last time out for McGill. But Rowan Burrell is just, he's becoming a man this weekend. Absolutely. Being able to execute, especially when your team needs you, you lose your, uh, your leading scorer there, your setup guy. Um, and you, get, you need guys to step up. It's the next man up mentality, and uh, he has played his role to a T and then some. So we saw last night in the, uh, the Trent game, the goalie out, two turnovers um, with not that much time. So we'll see uh, if Carlton can duplicate a similar success story here. And two goals have been scored in less time in lacrosse. Yeah. And again, with the, with the clock stopping in the final couple of minutes, it can make such a big difference. Of course, the tricky part for Carlton now not having possession and only the 35 seconds, you've got to push. You've got to go after it. What does Thomas Kaiser do? I mean, he comes out, he makes the hit there. You know he's going to be pretty aggressive getting, out, getting involved in the play, which can really help, but it also leaves your net un, uh, your net exposed. And the nice thing, like he, he's an athletic kid too, right? Yeah. So he yeah. can uh, he can get moving out there to, to really help with this. It's tough sometimes if you have a, a goalie that can't move quite as well and uh, the off-ball guy's able to cut through for, for an easy pass. Yeah. I would expect two long poles to come right out on yeah. whoever's going to start with this ball. And everybody else will pick up a guy somewhere. Yeah, it looks like Moralia will have it to start. Stay with us post-game after the handshakes for the player of the game presentations made by incoming Commissioner Scott Fox. He'll be out on the turf. And those are supported by Champs Restaurant, Hogtown Lacrosse, and Locker Hooks. Moralia just running away. Down to 20 seconds, he's killed half of it. it. Looks like he's thinking about taking a shot. I don't think that's gonna happen. And sometimes not a bad play as long, like the intentional missed shot. Some, if you right. got a guy backing you up on the, yeah. on the goal line, uh, but he looks like he'll be able to just roll this one out. And uh, McGill will be going back to the final for the first time since 2015. And you can see the disappointment for the Ravens, but what a battle they put up and this is a process, it, it doesn't help the guys right now, and it certainly doesn't help the guys who are graduating to say, hey, there's lots of good days ahead for Carlton, but there are lots of good days ahead for Carlton. Absolutely, and that, like, there's no words, and you know, when you're in this situation, especially for the first time, you, you play the what if game, and if we had done this, if we had done this, but the reality is, is games are always a, a collection of events. It's no one thing, it's no one player. Um, and you know, sometimes this, especially when you have good teams that are loaded, the NLL is part of this, and you know, like you gotta, you gotta plan early in your year for for maybe not having guys. Uh, you know, you can't hold players back, and it, it really is a reality. And um, you know that that's tough sometimes too. So I mean, great battle, great effort on Carlton's part to to really push it at the end there. Um, they'll be disappointed this one for sure, but I mean, tremendous season for them finishing uh, finishing first in the East. I don't know if that's ever happened where they've been the first in the in the division. So yeah, I, I mean, so. from a program standpoint, I mean, really good things are happening uh, for them in the nation's capital, and I'm sure McGill will be happy, uh, you know, after finishing third place and and losing to Trent and to to Carlton to uh, to be heading back to the final for sure. And that will be against the winner of. Western and Brock, the storied rivalry. Teams are lining up to shake hands, and then we will have the player of the game presentations. We'll select the all Begataway Cup team at the end of the weekend, and we've got some pretty strong candidates. I would suggest Ron Burrell might be involved in that discussion. I would think that he <laughs> will be for sure. Yes. Sam McDonald's making a pretty good case at that uh, yep. face-off dot. I don't know. I'm sure... Uh, Tim Murdoch will have a tally chart in his pocket <laughs> and uh, be able to tell us the exact statistics. So I, let me check because I'm surprised he hasn't sent it yet. No, nope, no word from Tim yet on the uh, the face-off tally. It'll be coming. It will be coming. <laughs> we do appreciate Tim's passion and his uh, eagerness to help. It's a lot of fun. So that's our All East event for the day. The All West event will be coming up at uh, at 
I believe Western took both the regular season matchups uh, against uh, against Brock this year. I think for the last two years, actually. Right. Western has won all the regular season games. So it's, it is. It's the uh, it's tough beating the same team three times. You get to know each other. You get to know your tendencies. Um, so I think we got another good one on tap this afternoon coming up uh, live from uh, God's Country here in Peterborough. On Lacrosse TV, and, you know, you're looking at a goaltending matchup with Michael Orlando for Western and Connor O'Toole, the real veteran in Orlando, and the second year guy or third year guy maybe with uh, Connor O'Toole, but really his second year playing regularly, and uh, that's just some great goaltending. We've seen a lot of really good goaltending this weekend. I mean, we've we've talked a lot about Rome Burrell, we've talked a lot about McDonald, but. How good has Joseph Beam been as well? He made a lot of saves down the stretch there. I mean, I don't know that he got he got a ton of shots tonight, but you know, it really did when Carlton was getting uh, making a run and and getting some on net there. He was able to turn them away, which uh, quelled the comeback there early for sure, and really put the pressure on the Ravens uh, at the end of the game there. I think Scott Fox, incoming commissioner, is ready with the presentations of the player of the game. Again, supported by Champs, Hogtown Lacrosse, and Locker Hooks. Scott Fox and Tom Bolesky. Yeah, new members of the executive. Technically taking their roles on, I believe, tomorrow at the end of the Gadway Cup. Okay. I'm not sure if we actually determine exactly the moment. Is there a, is there a ceremony? <laughs> a knighting of sorts? <laughs> not sure. <laughs> Sam Trumbull for the Carlton Ravens. You know he would have loved to be able to do more, but he was still quite effective. The league's leading scorer this year, and a real driving force, as there are many driving forces in the growth of Carlton Lacrosse. And for McGill, Sam McDonald. I mean, maybe that's a bit cumulative, because he has had two fantastic days of, of driving possession for the, the Redbirds. Yeah, face-off play is so crucial, having that possession. Um, and it's tough when you have a face-off guy that can place the ball. Um, I thought Sweet did a really good job of, of, of battling with him. There was a couple good wrestling matches there. Um, but, you know, the edge, when you're talking numbers and fractions, uh, it's undeniable right now that, uh, that he's on fire. That will do it for the first semifinal here at the 2023 Big Gataway Cup at Justin Chu Stadium in Trent University. I'm Stephen Stamp with Jeff McKinley on behalf of everyone at Kufla, everyone here at Trent. Thank you so much for being with us. We have one hour and 20 minutes until the 4.30 p.m. face-off of Western and Brock in semifinal number two. Make sure you come back and join us. We'll see you then.